another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vincent. I'm an Army veteran. And today I want to talk to you about the discharge upgrade after 15 years. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And you can find more content from Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Reddit for more content. And if you're a veteran and would love to share your story or resource for veterans, or if you're a non-veteran and would love to share your resources, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule a meeting. So again, today, man, we are talking about the discharge upgrade after 15 years because I'm hearing um something about, you know, veterans who are faced with situations where they didn't receive um an upgrade for their discharge and it's been 15 years since they been out of the military. And there are special circumstances where if you've been out the military for more than 15 years, you can still fight for it and apply for your discharge to be upgraded. So what I want to do is I wanted to actually, you know, talk to you a little bit and show you how to go about doing that. So I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see the actual website called va.gov, which actually is where you're going to go to, you know, apply for your benefits to be upgraded. And one of the special things about, you know, um, after 15 years, they have, you know, special rules. And what I would also say is please go see one of those organizations such as DAV um, and other organizations that are out there. Please go see them so that they can help you with this because they do have organizations that offer free help for this. But I wanted to just take the time out and just show you this. And I want to put a disclaimer out there. No, I don't work for the VA. No, I have no affiliation with the VA. I'm just a veteran who talk about the resources and places that I use. And I just want to get the information out there to you so that you can get the proper help with your situation. So from right here, you can see um, that they have, you know, certain um, criteria for people who want a discharge upgrade. And I know that those who are outside of that 15 year window, these are some of the things that potentially you can actually get your discharge upgraded for. Because if you look right here, you see mental health condition, including post-traumatic um, stress disorder, TBI, which is traumatic brain injury, sexual assault or harassment during the military at the VA. Uh, we refer to this as military sexual trauma, MST. And then they got sexual orientation, including don't ask, don't tell policy. So these are some of the um, these are some of the actual um, I would say bullet points of what they're allowing people after 15 years to basically get their discharge upgraded for. Like these are the criteria, and um, for the most um accurate update information regarding discharge procedures. It requires you to consult, you know, official military regulation resources or legal professionals. With that being said, it's also important to note that there may be exceptions to the 15 year limit in certain circumstances, such as cases in, as I stated earlier, post traumatic distress, PTSD, or other mental health conditions. In such situations, individuals may be able to apply for a discharge upgrade beyond the 15 year li limit. However, specific eligibility criteria and possessions varies, so it's best to consult the proper, the appropriate resources and legal professionals for guidance. To apply for a discharge upgrade, you typically need to f need a DD Form 293, also known as the application for the review of discharge or dismissal from the armed forces of the United States. This form should be mailed to the appropriate address for your branch of service which can be obtained from the relevant military authorities or their official website. Remember to gather any supporting documents such as medical performance evaluations or other evidence that can strengthen your case for a discharge upgrade. It may also be helpful to seek assistance from organizations that specialize in military discharge upgrade, veteran advocacy groups, or legal professionals experience in military law. Again, please note that this information provided here is a gener is general in nature, and it is crucial to consult the official 
regulations and resources or seek legal advice for accurate and personalized guidance regarding discharge upgrade procedures. So that's all I wanted to do, man. I didn't want to make this a long drawn out video. I really just wanted to get straight to the point, wanted to give you some information that can help you out. And if you need help with this stuff, again, as I said earlier, please make sure that you seek legal assistance. I know legal assistance may not always be required because some of you are actually smart enough to actually go through, read, find out information that you need and make the necessary um, changes that, you know, you need because me and my wife, we actually went through the same situation. Um, she got out and her situation was what it was. And based off of some of the new criteria, even though I don't think it was 15 years um, after, but she went and applied and her discharge got overturned and because of that um one of the things i do want to put out there is on um, when she did that because at the time when she was going to school they were paying her at a select rate once her stuff went to full honorable um other than um after being other than honorable they had to pay her at a hundred percent rate for her schooling so each school that she went to where they paid, I probably, I would say probably like 50, 80%, something like that. I don't know the actual numbers, but whatever the percentage was, once they fixed it, all of those schools basically were paid a hundred percent, you know, um, of the entitlements that she received for school. And because she was no longer attending those schools, she was able to receive, uh, a hefty amount from the schools that she went to that she no longer was going to. So there's potential for you veterans out there who are in the situation to actually get some money back in your pockets. If this happens to work out for you and a long story short for myself, I went through this similar situation. I was in, the, I was a full-time soldier for seven years for six and a half, seven years. Well, I was supposed to be in the reserves at the time. I was already rated 90% dis um, disabled as I was in the reserve. And what ended up happening was I couldn't be at my reserve unit and be 90% disabled because the way the VA worked was they looked at it like I was still collecting from them. So they were taking money from my 90% that I was basically getting from the reserve unit. So I decided, you know what? I can't keep going. I'm not going to go. And I stopped going because it was just a lot going on in my life at the time. I, I had a lot going on with PTSD, the medications, just so much going on in my life at that point. Well, what ended up happening was I ended up getting kicked out of the reserves. And because I got kicked out of the reserves, I was chapped it out. And instead of me go, being able to go to a medical board to be medically retired out the reserves, I was just kicked out. And they reduced me from an E5 to an E1 in the reserves, even though on active duty, I still carried my status as a sergeant. So with that being said, when this rule came out that allowed me to fight for my discharge to be upgraded, because as I showed you earlier, you can see on the screen, PTSD is one of the criteria that you must meet. And I am rated at 70% for PTSD. So all I did was I submitted the medical evidence, which was the medical evidence that I had from the VA showing that, hey, I was 70% disabled with PTSD at the time, well, 90%, but I had a 70% rating for PTSD. And I showed them the documents that I had while I was in the military that showed them that, you know, I was in a psychiatric hospital for a week or so because of what was going on with my PTSD. So I just gave them the medical evidence that I had and I didn't go seek legal assistance to do this. I just went and read what I saw on VA.gov and my wife, because she already went through the process, gave me input and I applied for this stuff by myself in my situation and my case was overturned. So don't get discouraged. Don't feel like because, okay, it's been 15 years, there's no hope for me. I'm gonna be honest with you, sometimes you don't know what can happen if you don't try. And even if you try and fail, like they used to say when I was growing up, keep trying and try, 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 try again. Don't give up, don't lose hope, don't throw in the towel. Don't think that it's the, 
that this is the end of the road. You know, things can work out for you. Sometimes you just got to keep putting the effort and keep applying because, I mean, things will work out. I mean, I look at the fact that when I got out with 90 percent, it looked like it was no hope for me, you know, and it took from 2013 to 2019 for me to even get 100 percent. And that's just 10 more percent. But I didn't lose hope because I always went in with this mindset that what do I have to lose? I'm already not receiving 100 percent. So even if I don't get it, it's not going to change the situation I'm in now. So what's the chances of? Me not getting if I if 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 I if I sit here and I say okay you know I'm not gonna apply the, the chances are slim to none but if I apply there could be a one percent chance that this thing could work out in my favor and I just kept fighting and I kept fighting and eventually that changed right now my wife going through the same situation but the thing is we're not gonna lose hope because we know that if we keep trying something at some point got to break through and. I'm just a firm believer of when you want something, sometimes you got to be like a fly. You got to nag people. You got to keep nagging. You got to keep going to the VA. You got to keep filing. You got to keep fighting. Don't throw in the towel because at the end of the day, look at it like this. Your situation is what it is. And at the end of the day, it's not going to hurt if you just take out an hour or two every time you got to go file and apply and fight to just put in the paperwork. That's all you're doing is putting in the paperwork, sending it in. Going back to be reevaluated. That's all you're doing. So don't lose hope. And as always, man, this has been another episode with your boy, Brother Vince, Vet Talk. And all to all my great people out there, Vet Talk out.